In order to plan for a more resource efficient built environment, we need to understand the patterns of how buildings consume energy in our cities. To address that goal, the Sustainable Design Lab at MIT has developed a citywide building energy model for Boston, working in collaboration with the Boston Redevelopment Authority and MIT Lincoln Laboratory, with funding from the Massachusetts Clean Energy Center. Creating such a model requires extensive information about the city's buildings and their operation. How does one build an urban scale energy model, and how can it most effectively be put to use? The analysis begins with the GIS database maintained by the City of Boston. GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems, a common data format that combines spatial information with a diverse range of statistical data. Boston's GIS database enables users to connect multiple data types together, such as building geometry, parcel use, and property tax assessment information. Based on these datasets, the MIT team, in consultation with local building experts, divide Boston's building stock into 48 building archetypes based on 12 use categories such as residential and office and four time periods of construction. The team assigns a diverse set of properties to these archetypes, including wall and roof constructions, building occupancy time schedules, electric lighting and thermostat settings, and HVAC systems. To properly consider local weather conditions, the model incorporates climate data collected over several years at Logan Airport, including hourly values for air temperature and relative humidity, as well as wind and solar radiation. An urban energy model also requires information about the geometry of each building. The GIS base file contains detailed building footprints that are extruded based on documented roof heights. The resulting outer building envelope is then further subdivided into volumes for each independent floor. Lastly, windows are automatically generated on all facades. The team then incorporates the context geometry of surrounding buildings as well as local climate conditions into an energy model. The underlying simulation engine for this research is Energy Plus a thermal modeling software supported by the U.S. Department of Energy, and one that is widely used for the design and certification of energy-efficient buildings. The simulation results include detailed electricity and heat fuel demands in each building for every hour of the year. By repeating this process for every building in Boston, the Sustainable Design Lab creates a comprehensive hourly energy use profile for the entire city. Spatially mapping this information makes it possible to analyze when and where high energy demands occur, helping to visualize problem areas and identify key opportunities for improvement. This example looks at July 7th, the hottest day of the year recorded in Boston's weather file. The multicolor surface represents the hourly electricity demand, and the graph on the right displays the total profile of the city. At night, pictured here, electricity demand profiles are at their lowest. At 7 a.m., most buildings have started their daily operation cycle, and the profile shows a clear demand concentration in the denser urban areas including downtown, Back Bay, and South Boston, where most commercial buildings are located. Since these morning demands are caused primarily by lighting and plug loads, residential areas retain moderate consumption rates. In the afternoon, solar gains have increased indoor temperatures. As residents begin their return home, Air conditioning becomes a significant residential load, raising the overall electricity demand of the city. A peak is reached between 5 and 6 p.m. Commercial demands start to drop through the end of the workday. At around 9 to 10 p.m., residential air conditioning use also begins to decrease. Lastly, minimum electricity demands are reached around midnight. By understanding the urban energy use patterns in each location throughout the day, the city can develop targeted energy policies and building retrofit strategies to reduce building energy use and alleviate the burden on high demand portions of the city's electrical grid. To understand how this model can be applied, let's take a closer look at the Back Bay, Columbus, and South End neighborhoods. The graph on the left shows the hourly electricity demand for this particular section of the city. Commercial buildings are responsible for most of the demand, which peaks between 4 and 6 p.m. In this area, there is also a high concentration of buildings with a relatively uniform roof height. Installing solar photovoltaic, or PV, panels on these roofs has the potential to reduce the electricity demand covered by the grid. Let's consider a scenario in which 50% of the roofs in the area had PV panels. 
Using readily available simulation tools, the city can predict the energy generated by those panels according to their context. How would this affect the demand profile for the area? The results of the Boston Energy Model help answer this question by clarifying which buildings and uses are responsible for the demand. Commercial buildings such as offices, retail shops, and hotels are responsible for most of the consumption throughout the day. At critical peak hours, however, residential buildings increase the demand even further. A large part of that peak comes from cooling requirements in all building types, which is unavoidable during the summer season. Let's now include the PV panel production in the hourly demand profile. Although the grid-based electricity supply would be smaller overall, a larger disparity between base and peak loads emerges in the afternoon. While base loads can be covered by traditional electricity plants, large peaks require the operation of additional plants for short periods of time. This makes them less economically efficient, driving up the price of electricity. Using the Boston Energy Model, planners can test different efficiency measures at the building scale and evaluate their effect on the hourly demand profile. For example, a demand response scenario for commercial buildings that increases their peak time thermostat settings by only a few degrees would alleviate the strain on the grid and make photovoltaics more financially viable. Combining solar PV with deep building retrofits and distributed supply systems can further reduce peak demand and overall energy use. You can learn more about this project at the MIT Sustainable Design Lab website.